Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I have decided to build a Ghostbusters uniform, jumpsuit, equipment, and proton pack. And I've decided also to document the entire process. Largely because I hope to inspire others to do the same thing in their own way and in different ways. But Ghostbusters is not the limits of my interest. It's simply one of the things that I enjoy and love from my childhood. And now that the Afterlife movie has been released in theaters, we can anticipate that there will be a growing interest in this franchise and wonderful myth of New York City. The first thing that you're going to need is an appropriate uniform. The right uniform for the job is the CW27P. It comes in Nomex and there are also cotton versions available. I recommend highly that you either buy proper or official military issue Otherwise, you may end up getting something that does not look quite right, and the color will be off. If you are vigilant in searching, you will find good deals. This, for example, is an excellent deal, and it's cheaper than the budget alternative that's found on Amazon. You'll look a lot better, you'll feel a lot better, and you'll be starting properly. So, do not go budget. Find yourself a good deal. If you can't find a good deal on an official issue flight suit, then move over to Cockpit USA because they've got a great deal over there on a cotton version that's pretty much bang on. And the bonus is it already has brass zippers unpainted, meaning you've already got the look and you can skip the first step. And speaking of the first step, let's get to it. We're going to get all the paint off the zippers and go back to brass. Going back to brass is what really, really makes this uniform seem authentic. It's the little details that really, really do the job as far as re-triggering those past memories that we see the in, in pure authenticity so this is what i recommend that you do to start off is get yourself on there and get that sandpaper going to start we're going to use 220 grit sandpaper it really is the right paper for the job it's gritty enough to take off the paint and it's uh, fine enough to get into the little areas that you need it to so basically this is the technique uh i recommend guys Take your time, okay? Uh, you don't have to get it all done in one sitting. In fact, it's probably going to take you multiple sittings. You can do it while you're watching the television, or when you're listening to music or anything else, or even just enjoying a sunset or whatever. If the weather's nice, you know, this is a great thing to do just to pass a little bit of time. Uh, work on one zipper or two zippers at a time and then stop. Otherwise, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to get lazy, and you're going to cut corners. But basically, the paint comes off pretty well. Uh, just fold the paper in multiple ways to get the, the thickness and the fatness you want and use the various corners that you create through those folds to get into all those little nooks and crannies. Now, keeping in mind, anything that you miss is just going to seem like wear or it's going to seem like dirt. It's going to age, age this. The big thing, though, is you don't want to be lazy about it. You want to get everything that you can and only leave what you can't. You know, what you can't is what's going to look like age. So... That's what you're going to do is you're going to hit it all everywhere that you can uh, all along the zipper pull and then at the actual zipper pull uh, hold, holder as well. Now sanding the actual zipper itself is actually quite easy. Uh, you just want to pinch a little bit between your fingers and then just sort of rub a folded, a fat folded piece of 220 right across it. And I'm going to be honest, the paint comes off almost like wet paint. It comes off very easy, so clearly they don't paint it as thickly on the teeth as they do on the pull. But basically, head yourself all the way down the zipper and, uh, you know, be vigilant about it. Some, some zipper teeth sit lower than others. So the ones that sit low, you might have to open the zipper up and just get that one tooth. The other thing I did is I opened up the zipper completely and I took a quick blast along the edge of all the inside of the teeth as well just so that no paint would would be showing through I, I wanted to really get this thing back to the original the original as much as possible and uh and that's how i did it so yeah it basically uh it really is easy to do it just takes a little bit of time so take your time do a little a couple zippers each time and you'll be through it in a couple of days that's what i recommend so when you're all done this is basically what it ends up looking like um it's bright, it's colorful, and uh, it's a little bit like jewelry, you know, it looks real good. Like, in, in my mind, it looks better than the, uh, than the black. Let's push forward.
Okay, so moving on to the next phase of the project is uh, the No Ghost logo and the name tape. These are the two patches worn on the uniform, and they really do complete the uniform. I'd go as far as to say that if you do these two first steps, you'll basically have a completed recognizable uniform. Uh, these are the patches that I went with. They're found on eBay and Etsy. You want to make sure that the No Ghost logo you go with, that he has a chin, and that he's uh, not the fatter version, uh, meaning there's less stomach. There's a lot of inaccurate versions, so you want to make sure that you find the right one. Just uh, look for advice on GBFans.com or uh, on eBay or Etsy. Find the ones that are the most popular. The ones that are selling the most are generally the most accurate. So these are the tools that I use for this portion of the project. A nice sharp pair of scissors, a 4-inch sewing ring, unbelievably handy for these for circumstances, enabling you to sew the, the patch as flat as possible. I've also got a chalk writer that's used by uh, tailors and those kind of people. And then I have the threads that I'm going to need. A matching red, a matching black, and a matching white. The red and the black are both nylon. Fortunately, the white's cotton, and I recommend you go nylon. But if you don't have nylon, cotton will work. Okay, so now we've got this sleeve nice and flat. We're going to place our No Ghost logo. Uh, we're going to use the double shoulder flap above to give us our central point. And we're going to use the edge line to keep us going straight. Now the rule is one go no ghost logo down. So I'm marking the baseline. And where that baseline was drawn on the top logo is where the headpiece will go on the bottom logo. So that's how it goes. One ghost logo down. Now I'm going to use my chalk line to mark out exactly where that belongs. And uh, the reason is that it will enable me to see exactly where I need to put it once I remove it. And it also helps me see if it's been moving in any way or if it's slid in any way at all. Uh, so that is not easy to see for you, but I can see it. And now I'm using it and I'm able to put the ghost logo exactly where it belongs. Just reconfirming my edge. And we will be ready to iron this down. Okay, once you have your position, you're committing to it. So carefully place a cover over top, something like a thin t-shirt will do, and recheck just to make sure you haven't moved it. And I'll be honest, I checked this multiple times. just want to make sure that I was happy that no matter what I did, it wasn't sliding it. Now you're committed. Burn it down, and it's staying, and it's staying permanently. And even if you move it, that glue is going to be there and stuck there. So you're committed. All right, just doing a quick check. And we're going to put it back down some more. Okay, so the last of the burning, and this is what we've got. This is what it looks like. Uh, checking the heat, checking just to make sure all the fingers and pieces are stuck, and just doing a final little touch without a cover just to burn down anything that might have been missed out. Um, it's good to do that at the end just to make sure it's as hot as possible without melting anything. And now on to the chest piece, same deal. Uh, we got to get this thing centered, and uh, you'll notice that, uh, first of all, I'm pulling all the fabric so it's as flat as possible. And you'll notice that uh, I've cut away the Velcro that would have held the original name tape or name tag. And uh, there's still a square there for me to follow as a reference, which makes it a lot easier than putting on the shoulder piece. Um, it doesn't show up on the camera, but it's most definitely there. Now, if you follow my finger, you'll see I'm indicating exactly where it is. And I'm going to use that as my reference here for the name tape. And there we go. It's there where I want it. Again, reconfirm the positioning because this is it. Cover it over and reconfirm one more time and we will be ready to burn it down. Okay, same as before. We're going to cook it. We're going to do a quick check just to confirm we didn't screw it up. And then we're going to push forward and we're going to burn it down real good. Make sure it doesn't move around and those corners don't pick up while we're sewing. Okay, the reveal. There it is. That's it. So now I'm just going to burn it down a little bit without a cover just to make sure that we melt it down good. And then we're going to be happy and we're going to move forward. Okay, so it's time to sew. And uh, I'm going to get my threads together. There's my black for the name tape. And I need the red. I need the right red. And I need the right white. Um, it's important to note that I did use white on the ghost and not black. Uh, now here I am opening up my 4 inch sewing ring, uh, placing it down inside the fabric. The inside ring goes inside the fabric. 
And what you do is you hold it where you want it and you take the outer ring and you push it down and pinch the material between both of those rings. Uh, if you've done it right, it will be tight, it will be taut, and it'll play like a drum. And that's exactly what you want. Okay, so now that these are ironed down, and especially now that you have the 4-inch ring on the No Ghost logo, these are pretty much staying put. So you can take your time and put the needle where it needs to go. Like aim, if you don't like it, reverse it, and go back in again. Uh, if you're having a hard time finding where to put it through the actual patch, just uh, walk it in from the actual fabric itself. In other words, push it through the fabric nice and easy, see where it goes, and then use that as your reference point, make your corrections. But essentially, you know, you can do a really good job hand sewing if you take your time. Just, you know, make like what? Like the same even spacing and, you know, pull everything nice and tight and it'll be really great. So here you see me just nodding up the back and it's going to be done and finished for your viewing pleasure. Okay, so here's the fun part. Let's take a look at how it turned out. Loosen off the ring, one-handed of course. And let's see. Yeah, baby, that's the way she's supposed to be. All right. Okay, we're going to repeat the process now with the name tape. The only difference is we're using black thread this time instead of red and white. And we're not using the 4-inch uh, ring. Uh, the reason being is that the patch is wider than 4 inches and also the chest pockets and everything else would just not really work with the ring the same way as it did on the arm. So just take your time, put the needle where it belongs, be deliberate. If you don't like it, reverse it and pick again. It's only when you lose patience and you start throwing it through really fast that you end up with really ugly lines and really ugly stitches. So just be cool, take your time, be deliberate, and do it one stitch at a time. Be patient, my friends. Okay, so I've just knotted it off, and you can see that it's complete. And it doesn't look too bad, and it's good in the front. So mission accomplished, my friends. Patch is up. We're good to go. Move forward. Okay, the next step is an important step, and too often it gets skipped. It's removing the pocket flap on the upper left pocket on the arm. And it's not there in the films, and it belongs gone. So, unfortunately, when I did this work, I didn't film it properly. So I'm just going to have to show you the way I did it using a demonstration. Here are the parts that I used to make it happen. A uh, sharp pair of scissors, needle, uh, tan thread, strong tan thread at that, and an X-Acto knife. Okay, so here's the pocket flap that I removed. It would sit like that. It would fold over. You can see the piece of Velcro that's still there. And there was a piece of Velcro on the actual pocket itself that I had to remove. Uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. Now I'm tracing out the original lines of the Velcro itself. Um, I had to remove it with, a, with a, the X-Acto knife. I'll show you the technique here. Okay, so the pocket was attached up at the top here. And there was a piece of Velcro right here. About one inch by two inches. The pocket flap sat just like that and would fold down like that. So what I did is I pinched it between my two fingers, I pulled it tight, okay, and then very carefully I put the blades of very sharp scissors as deeply as I could without actually damaging the actual uniform, and I snipped a few times very carefully. And after that I exposed all the threads I could and almost like cutting off little hairs I took everything I could away, okay. Next step is I took the X-Acto knife where the Velcro was, and I broke, I cut through, and I broke carefully all of the threads. Just at that point, okay? So it was only an inch in three places. And then I took the closest possible thread I could find, and that's cotton thread, unfortunately, but it's fine for this application. And I went to the original lines, where the original holes still were, and I sewed it up through those holes. It was not difficult to do, it just took a little bit of time. So here's how it ended up looking. And I gotta admit, I'm pretty happy about it. I mean, if you wanted to see it, you could, but it's really difficult to see the flap was even there, and the sewing turned out great. You just really can't see it after a few washes. All those holes should start to fill in. So the next step here is a portion of the uniform that most people aren't even aware exists, and sometimes people don't even bother to build it into their uniforms, but it is a mysterious yellow hose. 
and a gasket that comes from the uniform itself. And there's no real uh, terminology or science behind this. They've joked around that it's a catheter. But essentially, it's important, and it's one of the details that make this thing work. So this is the hose and gasket that I went with from Pro X Props on Etsy. I highly recommend them. He's doing it right. He's doing it accurate. Uh, the colors are sometimes gray or tan. Uh, I went with the gray. At the end of the day, I felt it looked better, and uh, it was good enough for me for sure. Now here are the tools I use for this phase of the operation. You recognize the heavy-duty tan thread, needles. You recognize also the uh, chalk line. I've got a ruler there, sharp scissors, some tape, my 4-inch ring, and Super 77 spray. So after referencing photos, I ended up deciding that the best way for me to do this was to just measure the pocket. It gave me an 8-inch number. And based on what I saw, I just went with half of that for 4 inches, and I followed the same uh, ruler to the location, and it seemed to work out pretty well with the reference photos. So yeah, I just went 4 inches up and put it on the center of that. I was happy with that at that point, and uh, that's what I went with. So now I'm going to mark it with my chalk line, so that I know where it is at all times. And uh, that way I, I can move and I can work around and not worry about losing the actual positioning itself. Okay, so you're already familiar with the 4-inch sewing ring. But that's what we're going to do here. We're going to put it right on top of our, uh, of our chalk line mark. And then we're going to send the interior piece inside the suit. And we're going to cinch it down and tighten it up. Okay, the next step here is optional, but I think it's a really good idea. It makes it a little bit easier. Uh, you want to centralize your hose where it belongs, or your connector, sorry, and then tape it all off, mask it all off. What we're going to do next is we're going to hit it with the Super 77 spray glue, spray adhesive, and uh, we're going to also tape off the connector, and we're going to spray the bottom of that, and we're going to get those two stuck together. Now, that's not going to be permanent. It's not strong enough. The materials aren't really meant to be glued together, and with the pressure that's going to be on the hose, it would never last. So really, it's just there to help you with your sewing. But when you want things to be flat and clean and look good, you really need all the help you can get. And especially when you're still developing your, your sewing skills, you're really best off just to uh, use the glue. The only real disadvantage with glue is that it makes things unbreathable, but on a 2-inch square like this, it's just not going to be a problem. So I recommend you go ahead and do that. Of course, tape off the connector as well. Just leave the bottom exposed. That way, uh, both pieces are ready to be glued. And uh, we can move forward from there. Now, this next step is pretty important. You want to grab a Sharpie marker and your ruler or a pen of any or anything like that. And you want to mark off as close as you can to the line. See the line there? You're trying to follow that line. Make them, make them line up parallel. And then you're going to grab your marker and mark off where the tape is. You don't need to mark, obviously, mark the uniform, uh, not with permanent marker. That'd be a bad idea. But uh, then you want to take two of your sew points and mark those as well on the outside tape. That way, from above, you can, you can line up those lines. The idea being is that you'll just keep nice, even spacing on your hose connector when you do the sewing. Okay, so now it's time to spray. Uh, we get our uniform down. And we're going to protect the rest of the uniform from overspray by uh, adding some paper and some tape. But first and foremost, I've backed it just so that no glue bleeds through. That would be a bad thing. So back it with something that uh, you don't worry about getting damaged. And uh, yeah, now tape everything off as required to protect it as much as possible from overspray. And uh, then you'll be ready to spray. Okay, now quickly hit it with the glue. It doesn't need to bleed through, it's just there to hold it. Okay, so next we're going to spray the connector with glue. I just grabbed this painter's palette because I had a hole in it. And I'm just going to take the male end of the connector and put it into the female end of the palette. Oh yeah. And then we spray it. Get it good and sprayed. Just so that it doesn't move around on us. And we're ready. Okay, so now we're going to marry the connector to our uniform. We're just going to line up our markings that we made. And we're going to press it down real firmly. Make sure that it stays put. That's the idea. And 
Once we feel good about that, we're going to remove our tape. I actually decided not to edit this portion out because I know how much everybody enjoys seeing this kind of thing. I know I do. Oh yeah, brand new. That's the stuff right there. Right. Cool. Okay, so this next portion is very straightforward. Uh, there are six holes in the rubber connector, and you're going to find those from the inside, passing through the holes one at a time. I did 10 passes total, um, so 10 threads per hole. And uh, yeah, it worked out really good. And if you see close-ups uh, of the actual connector from the film, that's exactly what they did, is they had six holes, and they, they wrapped it, I don't know, maybe a dozen times or so. So that's basically what you're going to have to do for yourself is uh, send these things through and uh, do it 10 times each, 10 to 12 times each, I'd say. And uh, be very particular again about your sewing. Take your time. Get things as close as possible. But one point that I want to make is that because at least my connector is rubber, and if you go with a rubber connector too, that what might end up happening is if you pull too tight, you could squeeze that rubber, and that'll take away some of the authenticity. Uh, you need it to look like it's plastic, even though it's better that it's rubber. So just be aware of that. Okay, so here's how it turned out. I'm very happy with it, actually. When comparing it to the screen used uh, props, uh, very well done. And uh, you can see from the back, it's clean. So yeah, that's good to go. Now we're going to remove the ring. It's going to be our moment of truth where we actually see how good it actually looks. And uh, we are very close to a finished uniform, my friends. And uh, yeah. It hasn't been that much work considering it's probably one of the easier costumes to make, even in an authentic way. So I encourage you to try it for yourself. Okay, so we are basically there as far as the jumpsuit's concerned, but there's still a lot more to do to complete this costume. Um, one thing, though, that I recommend is before we move forward or before you call this a done deal, give yourself an inspection. And get rid of all those extra threads that are hanging out. It's kind of like... An old man with nose hairs and eyebrow hair sticking out everywhere. Once you get up close, you can't see anything else. So clean clean your uniform up. Make yourself look good. It's important, you know. Um, especially if you're going to be hanging around with the public. Uh, you know, and maybe take a shower, for God's sakes, and do your hair. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> some, of you, some of you guys are just freaking out of this world. <laughs> hey, all the power to you, man. Wear a bra under there if you want to, pal. I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for paying attention. I had a good time. Uh, let's take a look at how it fits. Okay, so this is how it fits. This is me in it. This is me in the jumpsuit. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. I mean, the patch is square. It looks good and straight. I can see my zippers. I spelt my name right. The pocket patch looks good. I got my little rubber connector down there looking good. Everything seems all right, you know? Uh... I don't look too out of shape in it, like, check out my butt, like, yeah, man, looks all right, you know, so I'm ready to push on to the next projects, I gotta do boots, I gotta do the belt and other accessories before I even move on to electronics and proton pack, but uh, please, join me on those builds and uh, follow along, thank you so much.